We all kind of got together and designed a, a class project to try and find a site near Boise where we could, you know, where we could study raptor migration, and that's that's kind of how it got started. Okay, I'll pull it out of there. And keep it upside down, and then just like we did over there, legs, wings. Dirt bands. top of the sear or from the edge of the sear to the tip of the beak. We looked at oh, probably 12 different sites both north and south of the Snake River Plains um, and we discovered the greatest number of raptors anyways right here on the on the Boise Ridge. Almost immediately, we started working with the local Audubon groups, and uh, they started treating Lucky Peak as a destination for education. You know, I think it's hugely important that kids today get outside as much as possible and, and have a connection with nature because we're losing that, you know, in our culture. Yeah, good job. To make any sense of birds and bird numbers and bird health over a long period of time, you need to look at it on a bigger scale. For instance, we just a couple of years ago contributed all of our about 12, maybe 14 years of our hawk watch, uh, you know, our hawk migration count data to a, a big effort that looked at population trends in the western U.S., so on a regional scale. And it's really the first, first work of its kind um, that, that looks at um, you know, population trends on such a grand scale like that from, from data collected at so many different sites. There you go. Vibrating. Across the board, pretty much, on almost all western count sites, uh, golden eagles seem to be declining, American kestrels seem to be declining, uh, a few other species uh, were declining at, at many of the watch sites like prairie falcons and northern harriers. The vast majority of raptor species, um, at least if you're, you know, based on migration counts, are doing are doing well, probably increasing. So one thought, for instance, with the merlin is that that's a species like um, peregrine falcon and others that were affected by DDT 40 and 50 years ago that they're still recovering, um, and so that's it's nice to have that data that says, hey, this is a success story and still is because we've heard about bald eagle and peregrine falcon and their delistings or downlistings as their populations have recovered, but there's other species that have been benefiting as well.